All right, welcome back to another Roblox programming tutorial. And this one's been long overdue, but I really, really spent some time to do some research and learn about this. Um, and this is the topic of meta tables. Now, meta tables are arguably maybe the most powerful thing you can do inside of Roblox Studio on the programming side and with the Lua language in general. Um, we'll cover some concepts involving what's known as object-oriented programming or OOP for short and you know meta tables are incredibly powerful. Now before you jump into this video I strongly recommend that you watch the series that I did on tables. So I did two videos discussing tables and then also dictionaries as well. Um, you will want to know how both of those work and how both of those are used inside the Lua language and if you already have experience in that maybe you're from Python from other languages then you're good to go but take some time make sure you understand the foundations of tables. All right, but before we get into meta tables, let's go ahead and just do a basic cap on table. So a table inside of Roblox Studio is essentially a way to store multiple data types. So I could have name here, you know, I could have like an age here, and then I could have, you know, money that I have, right? So this would be just a good basic example, and I, I can't name it table, I have to name it tab. There we go, right? Um, but yeah, so this is an example of table and I can print certain things from that table. So print, for example, tab. And then when I do this, this indexes the first thing of that table, right? And if I run this piece of code here in my output window, let me go ahead and zoom in here so you guys can see a little bit better. But if I run this code here in my output window, it's gonna go ahead and print here name, as you can see, right? And this is the whole idea behind a lot of this stuff. And essentially, what meta tables are is what you have here in a normal table, right? Now, this may be the most important thing I say in this video, so pay attention. What you have in a table is a list of values. Whether they have a key mapping or not, for example, in like a dictionary, um, we don't have to worry about that too much. But what you have is a list of values. Now, when it comes to meta tables, that is where you get behaviors or functionality. Meta tables includes functionality into a table, right? Now, what do I mean by functionality? Um, we should know what a function is by now, right? So for example, if this script over here was parented to a part, I can create a function for that part here, like local part equals script dot parent, and I can create a function for that part to disappear, I'll call it dis, right? And I can say, okay, part dot transparency, Right, and then when this function is called here in this, it will make the part fully transparent, right? I'm sure we understand this, I'm sure we know this, I'm not gonna show it. But this is functionality, functions, right? Things that you can do after the game is running to have in-game events occur, right? Meta tables allow you to embed functions into tables. That is what makes meta tables so powerful. Right, you'll oftentimes hear the meta tables make normal tables more powerful. Well, that's how they do it. So let's go ahead and look at an example here. So I'm going to go ahead and create a meta table here, and I'm going to set it equal to an empty table, just like so. Now, if you remember, you can always add um, our CRUD operations, right? Um, create, read, update, and delete. You can add things to meta tables, and you can delete things from meta tables, like we saw in the previous videos. I won't go over that. Okay, now, the way this works is let's say we have a table or like a new um, table. So we'll call it new T, right? And with new T, I'm gonna go ahead and set the meta table here. So I'm gonna do set meta table, and I'm just gonna have this be an empty table, but it's gonna call meta table. Now, this is a very important note to notice here. This right here, new table, is considered to be a child, right? And then this, uh, after this, this meta table here, this is the parent. We'll talk a little bit more about the parent child relationship and how this works, but essentially when you do set meta table here, here's the, the table essentially that new table is, and then here's all the things that it inherits. So it inherits 
essentially all the things that are going to be inside Metatable, right? So that's what makes this a child, and that's what makes this a parent. And hopefully this will make sense in a second. I know Metatables can be tricky when you first get into them, but just bear with me here, okay? So let's go ahead and look at an example. Um, let's say with my Metatable, I'm going to create a new index for Metatable. I'm going to say Metatable, um, we'll call this name. Okay, so this is a key, and this is going to map to a value, which will be my name, Anthony. All right, so now Metatable has a new key value pair, right? Now, what's cool is that I can call new table here to print this, but I have to do one thing before I do that. I have to tell um, Roblox Studio that whenever Metatable is called or whenever Metatable is indexed, right? And these are meta methods. We'll talk a ton about this. Uh, I want that index to refer to this meta table. Okay, we'll talk a ton about meta methods in a second, but this is arguably one of the most important ones to understand. I and mean, you remember from my dictionary and table series that I did, whenever you type in, um, whenever you have a table, right, this will be an example, but whenever you have a table, so t is equal to this, and you have one, right, when I go t, We'll use the string here one instead for example purposes. When I do t1 here, this is known as an index. This is called indexing a table. I'm telling uh, Roblox Studio or Lua, I want you to do something with the first value in table t. So this is the first value here, so I'm indexing this, right? And then whenever you have your key value pairings, right? So let's say this is now, you know, the string. Uh, o, and I'm setting that to 1, right? Whenever I index the string O now, oops, sorry, index error there. Whenever I index O, right, it knows it's going to pull this value here, right? So that's the idea of indexing, okay? Just to review on indexing. Now, what this says is that whenever this new table indexes this, it wants me to go to meta table. So whenever meta table is indexed, whenever this is indexed, it's instantly gonna go to this table and that's how you find things like this. So for example, meta table, right? And I just created, this is a create operation, right? So remember our uh, CRUD operations, this is create. This creates name as a value in meta table. So if I call my new table, right? Which is set to this meta table, whenever meta table is indexed, because of this right here, it essentially has this in here to be called, right? So now I can go new tab, new tab, right? And I can index the value, hello, or name, excuse me, name, right? And then if I print this, let's go ahead and print this so you guys can see what's happening. When new table indexes name, it notices that there's no name here, right? but it's been set to this meta table. And before it returns nil, it's gonna check all the values in this meta table here to see if there's a key value mapping for name. Because I told it here that whenever meta table is indexed, go to the meta table, it's now gonna look through the meta table and I created meta table key value name here to Anthony. So it will find this value in the meta table. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the example down here. Go ahead and run the game here. And as you can see, it found my name. Now, why is this really, really cool and important? This allows you to reuse values everywhere. So you can create an initial meta table to store all your information. This is how this stuff was done, right? Part is essentially a meta table that stores all of these different values here. And then whenever you create a part, you're creating a new instance of that right? So this is the idea of having an object defined by many different properties, and it's all stored inside of meta tables. okay? So this is just a beginner um, understanding of meta tables. I'm going to create a second video here in a second discussing functionality, but I wanted to go over the basic concept here, and this is the basics behind meta tables. So I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments, and I will see you in the next one.